Next up, nipple bras. This is the new Erin. We're going to convert her by the time the season's over. She'll be on the sideline. Well, thanks so much, Kevin. Nick Sirianni said that pumpkin loafs and nipples are in for the second half. <laughs> Calm Down with Erin and Carissa is a production of iHeartRadio. Three, two, and action. We've got five big things to talk about. We're getting organized on this podcast, guys. Five big no things whammies, for those no of you whammies, keeping track. Stop. <laughs> for those of you keeping track at home and want to play along, I am going to further our discussion that we had on the pregame about a nail salon because there are a lot of things I have to say. One of our wonderful viewers asked the question, is it relaxing or experience? Anyways, if you didn't hear it, I will expand upon that. Aaron has some thoughts on... The Kim K built-in nipple bra, which I'm so excited Mm -hmm. to discuss and get everybody's thoughts about. Also, I can't wait for you to tell everybody about your Garth Brooks interview. Mm. And I have a special announcement coming up. I I wish we had the siren sound effect, but I want to start with Max first Halloween. I couldn't be here for it because I had to go to Nashville early. I was going to trick or treat with you guys, but I got the cutest picture. Tell everyone about it and go. We're going to repeat the outfit because it was a whole family situation. Mm -hmm. And because we're doing that, I don't know if I should say what it was. Should I? And just say, fuck it. No one will remember next year. When are you going to repeat it? Next year? Next year. Because oh, Jared, come on. Well, Jared's you, no. so bummed out he didn't get to do it. And I am too. We just didn't dress up. And we thought like we'll make Mac. Okay. Mac was Cousin Eddie from Christmas Vacation. Yes. And we had, so I cute. had an Ellen Griswold and Jared had a Clark. And we were going to walk around with the moose mugs. And then his stroller was done up, but we did it half ass. We were just so bummed out. Like we did the shitters full and all that for Mac. And so my husband... Cute got sick and we he, he we just wanted to make sure he was away from the baby because I didn't want the kid getting sick. I didn't want to get sick. The nanny didn't want to get sick. So we literally were like, get away from us. And three days later, after I got on a plane to go to Philly and I was feeling terrible about myself because I was very hard on him about being sick. Not that he did it to himself, but I was just like, and our Halloween sucked. And he's like, we were all ready with our costumes. Can we just do it next year? And I'm like, yes, we're going to repeat it next year. Aww. We don't care. Who cares? I know, but that looks so cute with the little cigar and the baby. I know. Did you buy it like that? No, we made it. We made a fake cigar and we put it in a pacifier. <laughs> oh my God. Well, because it was so cute. I thought you bought it like that. But, and I we'll know. put up a picture on the Instagram. Unless, uh, on the Instagram. What am I, a 90-year-old woman? Right. We'll put it the on the old Instagram. Instagram. Yep, Jesus. Um, all right. Well, Jared's feeling better. I and hope. you are too, right? I am feeling better. Yeah, it was just a quick in and out. A little athletic cream, oh, some vitamins and God. minerals. Keep it moving. No one has time to be sick. No. We are in, we will break down all the other stuff that we did, but first and foremost, it is the start of week 10 or finish up, you know, we record this on Monday, so Monday night. We're halfway night, through. What, week 10, double digits, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm, wow. you know, we talk about it, but like we were texting back and forth yesterday because you were at the best game, America's game of the week, Eagles, Cowboys, one of the greatest rivalries in sports. And it lived up to the hype because you've had some lopsided games this oh. year, to say the least, where at halftime you're like, rrr, rrr, and so have I. Um, but this was as advertised. T- take us through the whole thing because I was texting you before the game. I'm like, enjoy this because like these are those the games where you circle yeah. and like love, love, love. So tell us everything. Krista, you know what we realized when we all like got together after the game and had drinks? We didn't have one in-game break with you because our game was oh. so friggin' good. Oh, I know, because there was no reason to break in, even though the Raiders, because the only other game we had on our air at that time was the Raiders-Giants game, which, shout out to Antonio Pierce, which there's a whole story on that, for rallying the troops and getting his guys uh, a nice W, given all the drama that's happened there. But it wasn't worth breaking into your game. No one needs to slow down the back and forth and the back and forth of Jalen Hurts and Dak Prescott that literally came. I left here. How about this? I left the studio after the two minute warning. And then it was three and out for the Cowboys. And so there's like whatever there was like a minute and 50 something seconds left. And I was like, all right, I'm out of here. Like, that's it. Eagles get the ball back. I'm like, they're just going to take me. It's going to be over. I'm in the car driving home and I get a text message from someone being like, this game is crazy. And I'm like, fuck, I left. Like, I thought it was over. No, that's what I get. It was so good. Well, also, too, I mean, I'll tell, you know, 
our, I was going to say, I'll tell our fans this, the crowd, the vibe, it was everything you wanted it to be. The weather was amazing. It was perfect for a jacket. Like it was just all so good. Great. Thank you. And your outfit I want that jacket. was fire. Well, you can borrow mine. I won't fit into yours, but your outfit was amazing on Thursday. Um, but it was just a great scene. It was everything mm-hmm. you wanted. Um, Jalen Hurts, he doesn't want to talk a lot about his knee and what he was going through, but we all clearly saw it get bent the other way. Not great. It was like, oh shit, what's going to happen? I talked to Nick Sirianni coming out of the half. Uh, kudos to him. Can I just say, he's fucking awesome to talk to because you, you don't know if the coach is going to be like, he's fine. Yeah. Let's just go. Like, well, let's talk about the offense or the defense. He, I just said, how's the knee? Knee's fine. Okay, but were there tests run on it? No, not at all. He goes, in fact, he was in my office getting an IV. And I said, okay, so you're not worried about the knee at all? Nope, not worried about it. He's going to be fine. So so this is what needs to happen for our offense. I'm like, that's fucking awesome because coaches don't give you that information. And I really, really appreciated it. So that was cool of him. Game ends up the way it is. You know, the Cowboys get the ball to end the game. It was, oh my God, they could have won it. There was a couple of penalties. Yeah, It was just crazy. It was wild. It was everything we wanted. I was going to say your, uh, and I'd text you after it, which is probably not professional of me, but, um, it was a, so many times. And to your point that you're dependent on whatever someone's going to give you, whether it's the trainers, yeah. whether it's the coach, um, what you can see. And now even like with the blue tent, like you can't see as much cause those guys mm-hmm. go in for, you know, reasons that want to, you know, anonymity don't want the other team to know mm-hmm. what's going on either. But when a coach actually gives you something, it must be so nice. Cause the report was great. You're like, if I'm an Eagles fan and I'm sitting at home, I'm not like, fuck, is he okay? Is he going to be all right? Like, you're like, nope, fine, got the IV. And then he was like the next play. I think the first play from scrimmage to start the second half was like a run play or whatever yeah. it was to show people like he's fine. So it yep. was awesome to actually like have that information. If I'm an Eagles fan or just a sports fan in general, I'm like what's going on? Two things so, I learned. Well, two things that happened. One was, um, coming out of the half, I wanted to watch him run out of the tunnel. I wanted to see him. I wanted mm-hmm. to maybe catch eyes with him because of that quarterback show and Mahomes coming out at Super Bowl. I wasn't there in the tunnel and I was so pissed off at myself. So they were like, Aaron, can you do it before the kick? And I was like, no, no, no. I need to watch him come out of the tunnel. Uh, good. So then I did it. And then I did my hit. I wanted to tell you another thing because you and I haven't talked yet after the game, post game. Obviously, I know I'm either getting Dak or I'm getting Jalen. Um, you know, the defense makes a huge play. The DBs make a huge play on CD lamb, um, you know, to prevent a touchdown. And I had to ask Jalen about the defense. Cause I knew I got two quick questions. So he wants to talk about his teammates. He doesn't want to talk himself. I just wanted to ask him where that I knew he was sitting on the bench, just his reaction mm-hmm. to the way the defense played the, the final stop. And then Carissa, I was killing myself over on the sideline thinking to myself, shit, I have to ask him something about his knee and he's not going to want to answer it because I heard that he told, I read and I saw in a press conference leading up to our game, he had told the media, I'm not talking about my knee anymore. Well, we just saw on national television, your knee got bent the other way. I am sitting on the sideline watching this Shitting whole yourself. Like, drive, like going, shit, shit, I've got to ask. I'm even talking to PR. I'm like, how am I going to do this? And I start talking Without to myself mad. on the sideline. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what's the best way? God. And then, then I just thought, we all saw you go through this. You know, how were you able yeah. to gut, you know, you know, through this whole thing? His answer was so good. I'll do anything for this city. That's all he had to say. And yep. fucking Philly dies for you, man. It was so perfect for him. It was great. It was and I text you immediately afterwards. There's a theme here. I am bothering Erin while she's trying to do her <laughs> job. Not. But it, her and I, always, for, for those of you guys that are new to the podcast, Erin um, is so supportive of like Thursday night stuff and what I'm doing on Sunday and vice versa because we've been in that situation and I'm really trying. After our Dan Patrick um, podcast a few weeks ago, I've really been cognizant of my questions and like how to phrase questions to elicit mm-hmm. the best answer because it's an area that I'm not, great at like even in interviews I get too conversational where it's like a ramble on it's like what is the question right yeah. so when you ask what that is it? and then he gives an answer like that it's great or even the perfect. way that he lit up when you because he's going to go team first when you asked about the defense for the first question not about him like yeah what were you thinking when you saw your defense and it was like it's just cool to see because Jalen there's actually a funny meme the other day it was like Jalen it's like emotions are all the exact same it's just it's this he's not going to give you a yeah. lot and so when he like smiles and laughs you're like oh okay like that does not feel good you're like yes Check. 
game's over and it feels and it validates. You study so hard. You like there was actually um, Kaylee for the Today Show, Kaylee Hartung, who does sideline for Thursday Night Football. She does stuff for the Today Show. And it was really interesting. They did a feature this morning of like a behind the scenes of sideline reporters. Mm -hmm. I want you to do it. I want you to do the same thing, even just like for your own, like for your own self. Like it is Fast, it's, it would be fascinating to people to see what goes into it because not everyone understands how much prep, how much work that you do all week long. It's not yeah. you just show up for the game. It's all the calls no. of the players. It's the meetings. It's the you know practice. Mm-hmm. It's incredible. And then at the end of the game, you and I are people that like beat ourselves up for like the mm-hmm. smallest little thing. So it must have felt ni- nice on a game of that magnitude, lived up to the hype, and then you're like, got the interview that you wanted. So yeah, wonderful job, boom. Proud of Love you. you. Thanks. Um, wait. So in the pre- in the pregame, we were talking about you guys because, of course, the Dolphins Kansas City game was on early because it was in mm-hmm. Germany. Yeah, and you guys watched the game. So tell us about yeah. that. So I had four nights in Philly, which is a lot, but a because lot. it's a mm-hmm. so far, I did a sit down on Friday. Which my God, which Joel was great. Santos and Skip Clark, the way they d- yeah. produced and lit that thing, I'm, they made it I'm look so like jealous. a movie set. It was no. so beautiful. My God. I had had a few cocktails on Friday night and Skip gave me the footage and I like literally sat in bed and watched it over and over and over. They it was do an so amazing job. Gorgeous. It makes it mm-hmm. worth it going out there. And then cut to Saturday. Um, everybody gets in and that's a great time. And Kev's back from the World Series and we're all oh. talking and we're excited. And so we go to this restaurant really quick and then I'll get to Sunday. We go to this restaurant called Aroma on 3rd and Dom the Philadelphia Eagles, big mafia looking security guard who is a badass and runs that entire city and team. And I love him so much. He got us in there. Carissa, we sit down. We are in straight from like exactly what you'd expect in Philly. Like we walk in, it's a tight restaurant. There's all these different families and they're like, we loved you on Dancing with the Stars. So good. (laughs) We miss you. Like all that, like grandma coming over with her boobs out and her lace and her earrings and she smells fantastic. It was wonderful. So anyways, we sit down. The, the the waiter's like, I got you guys. I got you. We're going to do this all. I got plates coming out. All of a sudden, we're sitting there. We got calamari. We got peppers. We got meatballs. We got fried this. We got this. We got anapod. Like, it's like, holy shit, we're running out of space. Then he's like, what do you guys want? White or red? White or red? 50 bottles on the table. Oh Greg's like, heads are like, ready to explode. Yeah, it's I was going to say, this is Greg's dream. Greg's like, what's happening? So then we start <laughs> eating it. You know, we're doing it all. Then we got all the gnocchis coming out. Then what kind of, what do you want? You want branzino? You go, want meat? You want chicken? But what do you need? Jesus. It was unreal. I We were absolutely wasted and we were absolutely full. I mean, we weren't wasted because of all the carbs we ate, but we were just like, what? This is crazy. Uh, we ended up going back to our hotel. I think I called you from the meeting room. We called it I the Calder that. room after dark. Stupid call. I know. I was so, so excited to call you. But we, we we're trying to like just get rid of this food in our stomach. So anyways, everybody goes to bed. And then football was on at 930 in the morning. Yeah, KC the Miami. We're all in our jammies. We go back to the Calder room. We're sitting in there. Calder and it's room. Just like, Who knows the name of the meeting room? This girl. I do. <laughs> Probably Al Michaels. Um, There's a we, running <laughs> joke that I have no idea where I am half the time. And Aaron and Al have already looked at the menu for the restaurant they're going to <laughs> three weeks from now. They're like, I'll, I wouldn't even remember what the name of the restaurant is, let alone what I had for dinner. Jesus Christ. But we just watched oh. the game together. We had eggs. Greg ordered so pancakes. Cute. It was just so such a fun day. Great weekend. Well, it's one of those things that we spend so much time on the road. And uh, anyone yep. that's listened to this podcast knows our, you know, love of the crew that we spend time with on the road or even in studio because it is a family. And this weekend, um, even at Fox, like there was just this awesome, which there normally is with some weekends even more so than other. Just, I'm just so, you know, life happens and things happen. And Glazer and I, uh, Jay Glazer and I just ended up sitting and talking to a little, like with each other for a little bit about a bunch of different stuff. And he's like, you know, this, this freaking like job is, it's so much more than a job. And I like, I got emotional because it's like, it is family. And you now having your own family, you're spending time away from your brand new baby, but you are doing, you're spending time with these people that 
are also your extended family and support you and love you. And it's like, I don't know. It's just, I, I feel like sometimes like, yes, the days get long and different things like that, but how freaking lucky we are to have jobs that we love and to yeah. do it with people that we love even more that we consider family. So anyways, totally. that's my little like sentimental thing. But I'm just reminded that like when you're on those flights that are long, whatever, like who cares? Like this is the yeah. greatest gig in the world. And I hope it never ends because we've been lucky to do it for a long time. But um, it also got me thinking too about just jobs in general, because I don't know what I was watching something like there's a lot of people that still don't know what they want to do. I remember talking to my mom one time. She's mm. like, you're so lucky that you knew from a young age what you wanted to do. She's like, I don't I still don't know what I want to do. Mm -hmm. My mom's 65. And so when you think about it, like how grateful I and I know you feel the same way to live out like this dream. And I feel bad for people that are still showing up to a job. And there's a lot of people like that, that show up to a job and they're just sort of going through the motions. So I would say if you're one yeah. of those people, like give yourself some grace and then also just like really think about like what you want to do. Um, because life is short and it's just, I don't know. I don't yeah. know. I'm just like in a reflective mode today, but Agreed. just thinking about that kind of stuff. So, um, anyways, okay. Bringing it back to our top five things we were going to discuss on the pregame. One of the questions was posed, are nail salons <laughs> relaxing or not? So my nail salon is, speaking of extended family, Lynn, who's been doing my nails for, God, I don't even know, 15 years now. She'll I'm, also give you a nose job, she, apparently. Yeah, she'll give, she will. <laughs> she, I'll do every, I do everything at Lynn's. The, the, my eyebrows, she does haircuts. Maybe that's where I'll go to cut my bangs because no. I'm in this mode of wanting to change up my look Jesus. again. Okay. So anyways, but I love my nail salon. But the thing is, is Lynn remodeled this place and now she's only Herself. taking appointments. Yeah, she probably did. It, it kind of looks that way. God love her. Um, <laughs> she, I said, Lynn, you should have called me. I could have helped you with these lights, you know, <laughs> anyways, <colors>. but <laughs> she, um, She's the best. I love her so much. But it ends up just being Lynn and I a lot of time. And then Ronnie, who does the pedicure. So we end up saying, like, God forbid anyone walk in on this discussion of the things we're having. Everyone needs to sign an NDA. So um, I don't I'm not really a good person to speak about this. But I do appreciate the situations when you go into like, let's say I'm out <laughs> of town or whatever, and I can't go to Lynn. You go to a nail salon. And no. they're like, oh, do you want this callus remover for an extra $5? Do you want this cuticle $5? No. It, none of it makes a difference. It's not, these heels are still sandpaper, okay? I'm still having to peel the stuff off the back. No, it's not working. And I don't need that extra polish, that little scrub. It's not doing it. Unless I walk no. out of here looking like a different person. This and bill has been racked stinks. up. Yeah, yeah, it's not. I don't know all these upcharges. And I'm someone who just says yes to everything. So by the time I walk out of there, I'm Venmoing you $600. $150 and the nails are even <laughs> shipped because I haven't waited for them to dry. I don't know what's going on. No, I don't. I'm not into the upcharges of the nail salon. So don't try to try to do it with me. Mm -mm. And I'm doing the same damn color every time. It's the color that makes it look like you don't even have nail color on. So what the hell am I doing here anyways? You know, Well, that's why I decided to Red Rover, Red Rover, send these right over. And mm. I'm thinking to myself, these are very limiting and they make they're like, I don't know how long this is going to last. But as you hey. can tell from the tree, I'm in the Christmas spirit. You want to know what was colorful, color, colorful and fantastic? Your suit hmm. yesterday. You look oh. so fired. That <laughs> suit was sweet. gorgeous. Thank you, Victoria Jill Trilling, because um, mm -hmm. I would not have spent the money on that. But I loved it. And you're welcome it to beautiful. it at any time. Thank you so much. Howie Long, so funny. Two things, Howie. First of Go. all, I want to... <laughs> Can't he come on? He went on Chris's. Why can't he do ours? I, We're like his daughters. I love this man so much. This is the first thing he says to me when I see him yesterday. Whoa, I need sunglasses. That suit's so bright. And he's saying it in the sweetest way because every time I wear a fluorescent yeah. suit, he says it. The next thing out of his mouth is, what is this chrome on your fingernails you guys are talking about? Howie, <laughs> I... <laughs> you crazy so then, cats. So then Jimmy has to get involved and Jimmy goes, what are you guys talking about? Chrome. And I was like, it's so great. I love them so much. But I'm like, Howie, we're talking about nail polish. And he's like, so you like the Chrome or you don't like the Chrome? So anyways, it, I am now starting a new segment on the Calm Down podcast called What Did Howie Say? And he always so has questions about the things that we discuss on this podcast. So Howie, Ugh. if you're listening, we love you and please come on. Please come Cutie. on and correct us on oh. everything. 
And he's not going to oh, like no. this next subject. No, because it's time for you to discuss the nipple bra. So Howie, tune out and we'll see you next tune week. <laughs> oh, Jimmy God. will be perked up now. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> so I'm going to read you. Uh, Kim Kardashian built-in nipple bra is not a joke. It's her new Skims Ultimate Nipple Bra. This came out a couple of weeks ago. The product that mm-hmm. will give you that hard nipple... Well, how about how I say hard nipple? Hard Look nipple. Without having to crank the AC. I'm introducing a brand new bra, bra with a built-in nipple. So no matter how hot it is, you'll always look cold. This is the thing I'll say. That Kim Kardashian, <laughs> I don't, I mean, I wore skims yesterday. I had to I did because too. on Saturday night, we went to Aroma on third <laughs> and I wouldn't have fit on those in those pants. And I had to tell everyone about it on the sidelines. Everybody was does. like, how was dinner? How was dinner? I was like, dinner was so good. I'm wearing my skims underneath these pants. Uh, I don't what, know if you're from Queens or that? Philly or... <laughs> But anyway, I'm terrible I, with accents, but that's I, I don't know too. where you're where you're at. Somewhere in between <laughs> Queens and Philly. I am not going to doubt Kim K at all because I will tell you uh her skims are insane, amazing, Incredible. but I just don't get the nipple bra. And I, I, don't I guess get it it's either. not for somebody like me. I I don't need it. But <laughs> somebody I, I don't like doubt me. Her. <laughs> I don't understand. I I think that like the whole point of all of those nipple covers, like especially those petal ones that like have yeah. left an actual like look of a of a Stick. flower on your on your nipple you pull it off and you're like oh my god that's like a tattoo and then you're, I don't you're get picking it either. at it and you're like yeah are, you're not doing it in front of others but you're like yeah why am i if anyone was like yeah it's just a whole thing I, yeah. yeah i don't um and i don't it's understand in your fingernail it. and yeah I, I would like someone that is into this or maybe it is like the younger generation that's I, I don't know. I don't get it either. I, I mean, I mean I get... it's the Jennifer Aniston's of the world. I remember reading a whole thing where she was like, I always have hard nipples. And like, that's how her nipples were on Friends, right? And so... Yeah, maybe. I mean, I, I've oh, so I've gone back and forth. It's a few things that I've gone back and forth with on my in my life. My hairstyles is one of them as Aaron's encouraged me not to cut bangs right now. And also getting boobs. No. Because, because I go back and forth. Sometimes no. I'm like, I want like, I want to like fill out a bathing suit. I want to like be voluptuous and like feel like a woman because Mm. man, I feel like a woman. Shania has gotten two references here in this podcast. But then other times I'm like, I like that I don't have to wear a bra. At this age, I should be wearing a bra. We don't need to be National Geographic. And like, let's, you know, this is a bra. These, a brassiere. What over the shoulder boulder holder. What's that from? Beaches? Anyways, I digress to say that Sometimes I, so. I like that you can just throw on a tank top that has like that shelf bra underneath. You know, the ones you used to get from BP. Anyone remember those mm-hmm. brass plum? And they had the built-in shelves. And you're like, oh, I don't even have to wear a bra. Cute, cute, cute. And like that was like sexy, I think. But I don't know. I go back and forth. I'm like, do I want boobs? Do I not want boobs? I know I don't want nipples like poking out. So I can't get behind this bra. But if someone's listening and likes it, though. tell us. Submit yeah, questions, us comments, and it. concerns. Ow. Um, okay. Next on our list, since we're getting organized after three years in on this show, Garth Brooks. <laughs> Something that Go. I can always, from nipples to Garth Brooks. Okay. Woo! I'm shameless when I come when it comes to loving him. I so there's those people in your life. It's the Michael Jordans, it's the Garth Brooks, uh rest in Derek peace Jeter Houston, Derek Jeter, Cher, like just those people that you put on the Mount Rushmore of your life, and you're like, oh my God, if I ever got to meet them. It's been well documented. I don't want to meet Michael Jordan. I even dodged an interview that I was supposed to do with him because I don't want him. I don't want his breath to be mad. I don't want him to be mean to me. I just, I just can't like ever do that. But Garth Brooks, that's like a one and one A. Garth Brooks being my one A on that Mount Rushmore. When I got the call that I was going to be interviewing him, I could not pass up this opportunity. And let me just tell you, to summarize the interview, I've, I've already told you this story because I couldn't contain my excitement. I called you immediately after it was over. I think I was... I was I think hold I'm on, still... you FaceTimed me and I was getting a pumpkin loaf and I I was so worried because you were laying <laughs> Which, in bed. by the way, go... guess who's into pumpkin loaves now? <laughs> this girl. We converted her. Next up, nipple bras. This is the new Aaron. We're going to convert her by the time the season's over. She'll be on the sideline. Well, thanks so much, Kevin. Nick Sirianni said that pumpkin loaves and nipples are in for the second half. <laughs> um, but you had this look on your face and I go, 
oh no. And you go, what's wrong? And I go, did it not go well? And you were oh, like, yeah. it was great. Okay, it was go. everything I wanted and more. So I don't, which maybe I should get nervous, but like, I was so nervous. I'm not nervous, really. Like you have that like a little bit of adrenaline before you do live TV because it makes you feel alive and you should like whatever. I was so nervous when I was like getting closer. I was getting closer to the house because it's like the, his recording studio is in Nashville. And as I was going there, I was like, oh my God, oh my God, like I'm actually... So you know, when you're setting... I don't need to tell you this. When you're setting up for the interview as a courtesy, you always like say to the camera guys, to the lighting guys, you want me to sit in so they can adjust the lighting they need. Okay, we get it. So I'm sitting in the chair and he's not supposed to show up for like another 30 minutes. All of a sudden... That's your time to get mentally prepared. That's ready. when you're like, all right, mm-hmm. let's really like go through these questions now. Yeah. So uh, all of a sudden I hear the door open and I'm, I'm just thinking oh, it's like fuck. one of our crew guys, one of our crew guys. I'm not thinking it's him. And all of a sudden here it comes and he's like, hey guys, how's it going? And I'm like, Oh my God. Oh my God. Hi. Hi. I was like, hi, sorry. We're like, cause it's like, he like, it was like right when he opened the door, like the whole setup is right there. And this is me. This is me. Like, wh- like act like you're a professional. I just hugged him. I didn't even reach for the hand. I went straight in for the hug and he's probably he's, like, Oh my God. He's Southern. That's fine. I That's perfect. Just, I mean, I was like, hi, as if I like know the guy. I mean, Jesus, sure. Carissa. And he was, couldn't have been lovelier. He's like, thanks so much for being here and blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. So then he like walks through and he's like, okay, I'll come back in like a little bit. And so he goes down and gets ready, whatever, and comes back and sits down. What did he not smell even wearing like? shoes? He smelled not like, not like, um, it wasn't, it wasn't like, like a Travis, like Cologne David Ortiz. Over. Yeah. It wasn't one of those. It was like, a gentleman like it was just subtle you know Mm. and but he wasn't wearing shoes no just like subtle like fresh like fresh it was like i'm out of the shower and i'm fresh um he wasn't wearing any shoes but he's wearing socks he's in his recording studio you know so it's like there's all these rugs and like whatever you know as a singer the acoustics like with the rugs, and yet just as casual as can be in his nike hoodie and just sat down and just was everything. I felt like I've known him for years, or at least I, in my mind, I think I've known him for years, but I'm so embarrassing. I'm so embarrassing. I can't sing for anything, but I was like that moment, the same moment that you had on Jalen Hurts on the side. I'm like, I have to ask him about the knee. I was like, I have to sing with him. I have to at least just have it in my like archive of things that I've like sang with Garth Brooks because I've done that with Lionel Richie too, which again, very embarrassing, but I'm like, I don't care. I don't care if I embarrass myself. How many times can I say embarrassed? I'm doing it. So he said something about like how, when he went to Ireland, everyone knew every like word, word to his song. What's wrong with your neck? Oh, I'm just massaging it. Go on. Oh, okay. She's like, everyone knew, I, I knew, th- they knew the words to every one of my songs. And I was like, I know the words to every one of your songs. Like a total psycho. And he's like, oh yeah? And I was like, yeah, if you start singing a song, then like I can finish it. Like, oh my God, Chris, that, what? You grow up. And so he's like, okay. I was like, so start a song. And so he starts singing and then I, I chimed in and then he was singing with me. And I was like, oh my God, this is like one of my favorite moments in life singing with Garth Brooks. Okay. So the interview is over. Everything's great. I've embarrassed myself. We're leaving. You Thank you for the hospitality. Yourself. I saw the ver- like the footage. You look incredible and you're adorable. And so then we leave and Dominique and I and we're standing out in the cars like taking forever to come and it doesn't show up. So now I've ordered an Uber. All of a sudden, second story window opens up, head pops out. Garth Brooks yells down to the street. Hey, guys, you need a ride? what? What's that? He goes, yeah, you guys need, uh, you waiting for a car? And I was like, oh, we're just waiting for our Uber, like, like this. And he goes, I'll drive you anywhere you want to go. Where do you need to go? I'll take you. And you didn't go. No, I didn't go because I was like, I can't ask him to like, hey, can you take us to our hotel? No. Yes, you can. But the fact that that sweetheart of a man and, and just, and he kept talking about Trisha Yearwood and he'd call her Miss Yearwood, his sweet wife, he'd call her Miss Yearwood. So I told Steve that he has to refer to me as Miss Thompson. It was everything I wanted and more. And it was one of those things where they say, don't meet your heroes, but he lived up to expectations. And I just can't wait for you and I to go to his concert in Nashville or not in Nashville, but in Las Vegas, because he's doing a residency and I'm going to be front row and singing, hey, operator, won't you put me on through? I got to send my love down to Baton Rouge. Yeah, it was great. I'm was so great. glad it went so well. Thank you for asking. I'm so glad. Yeah, now anything, we're all out of time. With the Dan Patrick questions we had, anything you would do over? 
Oh, I do the whole interview over again. I was a disaster. I, I no, didn't even you care. Weren't. I was not. I wasn't focusing. But he was one of those guys that just made you feel like you've known him forever. So wait, we do have five minutes before we have to sign off. Um, you have a big announcement. Oh my god, it's to nothing make. compared to that. I mean, knock it off. What are you talking about? And you... by the way, it's not like our computers are going to explode if we go over. Oh. Okay, but <laughs> I just and so this is airing Black Friday. This is airing um, our interview. I mm-hmm. think it, I, I'm not exactly, sh- it should. And so the whole backstory of why I was interviewing Garth Brooks is because he's the Black Friday entertainment mm-hmm. that he's going to have a concert. So if you guys are in Nashville, it's on Broadway. He's opening up so a cool. Friends in Low Places bar. So if I were you guys, I Ooh. would go down there and try to sneak a peek into the sweepstakes. However you enter, I don't even know. I would just go there and be in the streets to even get some of the ambient noise radiating off of those amazing bars down there. Broadway's so fun. I love it, it so is. much. Nashville's so he, great. Great. So he's opening a bar? He's opening up like a pop-up for friends in low places. It's like just for the day and then they're going to like figure out if they want to keep Aww. doing it in different cities and stuff like that. Yeah, so so much fun. But yeah, that's that for that. Like an and idea. then hopefully the interview, um, I should probably find out. Yeah, should air um, on Thursday night or Friday. This Thursday night? No, it should air on Friday. Sorry, I don't even know what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is so exciting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know, I don't even know what's happening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm, bla- I'm blacking out, just like I did my Garth Brooks interview. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so we're almost out of time, but my news isn't as big as that. Next week, I'm hold stuck. on, I'm scrolling down to this uh, so I can get all the intel. Um, okay, yeah. So a couple, like... I don't know, maybe a year or two ago, my hair was weird when we did it because I saw the footage. We talked about things we'd love to do at some point in our life. And I said I wanted to host something on HSN. I'm going to be on HSN next week. <gasps> oh my God, we're in. This well, is right, huge. Yeah, I get it. Garth Brooks, HSN. Oh, shut so, up. No, November don't you dare 14th say that. at November 1 p.m. 14th. Eastern. I'm Can gonna I go be with doing- you? I'm doing it here in my office. It's going to be for wear. And I'm going to like talk on oh it. Oh my to, like, God. Do all the You're going to have to get your nails done by then. You have to well, get your nails done. They're done. You can't oh, tell. Yeah, we're going to have to, you know, oh. we need a color on there. Maybe not red, right. but no, I we have do to need to sit color. in there. But yeah, so all our Calm Down <laughs> fans, so please like uh, tune in. I don't know if we're going to be taking calls, but you know, I would love oh. to take a call. But it's on November 14th, 1 p.m. Eastern on HSN. I can't even take it. It's Aaron. for wear. I'm so excited. Oh my gosh, this is such great news. And you can do the whole... Now, I need to figure out, like, are we having displays? Like, how are you making sure that the clothes... I I mean, this is great news. I have no idea. I'm so excited. Yeah. Oh my God, you're going to be phenomenal on it. The same way that, like, on the Today Show, you watched back your interview with DeAndre Swift 75 times. I watched back your segment with Al Roker 75 times. (laughs) Like, a total (laughs) spaz. Because I was like, my cute girl... My sweet, yeah, because it, it goes back to that thing where it's like there's, you know, we've been lucky enough to do different things in our life. We get it. But when you can have a first, when you are on the Today Show with Al Roker doing the weather and like living out your dream, this is right up there. And HSN displaying your own clothing line. Ah! It'll be fun. I mean, I don't think HSN knows what they're in for, but it's like Garth oh. Brooks, you know? I'm just going to go with no socks on or with socks I mean, on. This is going to be fabulous. And you're going to probably be asked back for like a segment a week because no one can sell an item like this gal. Come on down. Let's go. I want to see, I want them, I want it to sell out. And then you'd be like, sorry, sold out. And then they put that big graphic over it. And they're like, item number 645655 is now sold out. I stole my mom's credit card one time and I was watching the uh, HSN. What like Sure. They, and I wanted the Ronco food dehydrator because the way that they were presenting that thing, I was like, I need to make beef jerky. Like, I'm going to do it. Like, the Ronco food dehydrator, the brawn ham blender, and then the sham wow thing. And then he also has that little thing that you like grate the nuts on. I'm the biggest fan of these shows. I stole her credit card. I ordered the items when they showed up. I then got grounded, but I got the Ronco food dehydrator, brawn ham blender, sham wow, and the nuts. What are you nuts? Mm hmm. Did you get all I that? I just all hope they ask you and I to come do Christmas in July. Their Christmas in July is oh, off God. the chain. It's insane. <laughs> We're well, talking Christmas about Christmas in November right <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. I mean, look, who's who's better to do it than you and I? We love I Christmas. Love we love selling things. And I mean, come on. This is now very I just exciting. want all so those diptyque candles I sent you today. Oh, my God. That looks so heavenly. I want that to be my living room. I know those things are so expensive. This is what I do. So I actually expensive. are you ready for this one? 
I save, if anyone doesn't know what we're talking about, these, there's, these candles are diptyque. It's so stupid how expensive they are, but they smell They're so divine. Good. They smell so yeah. good. So I will save the canister, the, yeah. like the big thing it comes in, and then I'll put imitation candles inside of it so the Ooh. canister still looks good, but I'm being economical. You got me? Sure, got me. sure, mm-hmm. sure. <laughs> yep. Did Garth have a candle burning at his um, recording studio? No, he didn't, but oh my gosh. I hope his people aren't listening to this because like a total creepo. So like in that recording studio, I mean, this is like where he's recorded like the biggest, you know, all of yeah. the things. We got the river, like the dance. We got, you know, friends in low places. Ah, thunder rolls. Thunder and rolls. So he, his, mm, and the lightning strikes. Another love grows cold on a sleepless night. Less night. So that's on the second floor. <laughs> Trisha's recording studio is on the third floor, but she also does her cooking show. Cute. So then I was in like the little area where she's the cooking show and sitting there and I was just like looking around and all their like platinum albums and all the things. Sing like he is the best selling single solo artist. The best, the let me get this right. He is the top selling solo artist of all time. Let's put that in perspective. More than Michael Jackson, more wow. than Prince, more than Whitney Houston, more than, I mean, just name Taylor a solo Swift. act. He's more. The top selling solo artist of all time. That's actually, that surprises me, not in a negative way. I just, I, okay. Yeah. That's like a trivia question. Mm-hmm. I'll take things I know for a hundred. Wow. I know this. We love you guys. Thank you for listening. Submit all questions, comments, and concerns for the pregame. Um, some of those things are your experiences at a nail salon, what you want to <laughs> buy or see on HSN on November 14th. Right, girl? Oh, yeah. And 1 p.m. Eastern. Christmas. Okay to decorate for Christmas at the beginning of November. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. And yes. Okay. Give us your last Jersey accent on the way out. What or, is another uh, one Philly, of them whatever. say to me? Um be nice to our birds tomorrow. Say nice things about the birds tomorrow. <laughs> so we're not going to shit on them. Give us a good game, you know? Say hey, good actually, things about the birds. Well, then the uh, Philly fans are going to love this. Guess who's joining us on Thursday night this week? Who? Jason Kelsey is going to be on. I'm doing it in the fly. Eagles fly. Coast fly. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, well, so he's, he's coming on. Yeah, he's going to be Why is he in but, Chicago? Uh, they have a bye week. And it was originally supposed to be him and Travis joining us, but Trav's very busy. Um, so he, he has no time for us. But Jason, see you there. That Jason Kelsey is a special dude. He's great. He, he sure actually is. told me on the conference call, I said, Jason, longtime listener of the New Heights um, podcast. Great job. I said, if you're looking for a guest, I said, Greg Olson was amazing on ours. And he said, well, I haven't thought about Greg. We've talked about you and Carissa a lot, but Greg is the first time I've thought of this one. And I was like, well, then hurry up. Have us on. Let's go. I know. Let's go team. We love them. And we love you guys. Thank you for listening. Um, What Ryan? We speak things into existence on this show. Oh, I don't know. Anyways. All right. Have a great week, everyone. Say something nice to someone today. And I'm cutting bangs. Next time you see me, I'll have bangs. Calm Down with Aaron and Carissa is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.